Now, like I said months ago, I'm not going to be doing single album reviews because I'd rather keep them posted on Tumblr and things. I said this on Twitter so you wouldn't have taken notice of it whatsoever. But I thought because I am a local Bregen boy, I thought I would uh, actually give a sort of uh, review of this new album by Bullet For My Valentine, Venom. Now I could give you a brief recap of Bullet For My Valentine after their 2004 EP Hand of Blood was released and they said that they were going to set in stone exactly what they were going to do, what new they were going to bring to the scene of metalcore and carry it on further down the line. And then they brought out The Poison, which was a highly acclaimed album from the quadruple, setting a breakthrough of metal lifestyle that they would carry on since Jeff Killed John, and that was more of their kind of 2000s to 2005 WWE favored music that they put on their pay-per-views. Screaming Fire carried on that feel that The Poison had, but putting more of a drop D feel on it instead of a drop C but still keeping a drop C and, you know, they only tuned the low E string up to a D, so, you know, songs like Scream Aim Fire would emerge from that. But anyway, after Scream Aim Fire, there was Fever. Uh, they said that it was going to be more of a party anthem than something metal sounding. I think that was a bit of a danger towards, you know, what the sound could actually be. But overall, it still had its own sort of identity and it was a different turn that the band was taking more towards the, the downfall of Temper Temper, but uh, still keeping that essence of life there for people to cling on to, get that humanity out there. The big thing about Temper Temper, I don't think this album has grown on me at all. I think of this album the same way as I thought about it right at the start of when I started listening to it. The solos, yeah, they're a bit more sinister than Bullet My Valentine used to be. Bullet always used to be melodic more than sinister, which is what the turn in Venom has taken to now. Um, a lot more of its highlights are from its sinister side. Uh, it starts off with a song, uh, well, an intro song called V, and V, knowing as it's the fifth album and knowing that uh, it also highlights the name of the album, Venom, uh, it comes off as a really dark and distorted track that builds up more to No Way Out rather than any of the other songs on the album. I don't think any other song could greatly promote this album at the start other than No Way Out, mainly because it gets right into business. It starts with a very complex intro, goes into very harsh vocals, and overall bringing in that melodic sense, that bullet already have. It's smooth, it's streamlined, and it also brings the drumming to a whole new level, which I think majorly Temper Temper lack that, especially with uh, evidently Tears Don't Fall Part 2, where, you know, you hear Tears Don't Fall Part 1, a lot of great drumming in that, and then Tears Don't Fall Part 2 becomes very basic in its drumming. Army of Noise, I've heard people say this has the best lyrics on the album, and I think that's quite an overstatement, considering how mediocre a lot of the lyrics on this album actually are, um, that it also kind of feels like it should have more harsh vocals, but it doesn't. The song itself comes in very strong instrumental-wise, but with the vocals in mind, the vocals come off very weak at the start. Then you've got Worthless. Now, Worthless sounds more like a Three Days Grace-inspired song. I don't know what it is. It's, it's got the right way of thinking, if you're trying to make a song like this. And after hearing this song, I thought that like the rest of the album was gonna, you know, have every song starting off with some sort of scream and you know that would get a bit tedious after a while. But I don't know, I think it's just for a few songs. What's the palm in that? In a way I feel like You Want to Battle, Here's a War is one of the strongest songs this album has to offer. I think this is one of the songs that's emotional for the right reasons. It's a very inspirationally uh, uplifting song to tell bully victims that just let it all out, you know? This is, you're being bullied and you shouldn't have to take any more of this. This is war. But even for a softer song like this, you can still hear that instrumental pull on your teeth. That's the way I like to describe it. Broken sounds like a modification of Saints and Sinners. Uh, I, I remember seeing, well, hearing it live uh, when it was first premiered in, uh, was it the Electric Ballroom in London? Um, I was gonna go to that actually, but I wasn't, well, I was low on money, shit, but, oh well, um, I didn't hear that, at the start of the song, you get that, uh, rhythm going, but then you also get something on the side playing as well, and 
That was hard to hear live. Uh, it had a lot of evil sounding uh, pre-chorus that it had. I need a script for these things. However, Venom, the title track. Now, this is one that people have already been saying, ah, oh, it's too soft, it, it lacks a bit of creativity, and, you know, it's a bit too simple, it's a bit weak in that aspect, and, uh, I feel it's soft and simple for the right reasons. Um, people would describe this as Tears Don't Fall Part 3. Um, I don't know, I was quite surprised uh, when I heard this right at the start. It starts off with these kind of, like, marching-style drums, and it keeps us cool almost all the way throughout the song, and I respect it for that idea that it brings. The harder the heart, the harder it breaks. Sounds like it's taking more notes from Temper Temper than anything. It sounds a lot like Truth Hurts off that album. Overall though, I don't think it's a very memorable song. I feel that it does lack a lot of creativity that, you know, is needed to push Bullet forward in their career. Again, Skin, another example of this. this Temper Temper note taking. I, I think it's a shame because this is where the album starts to lose a lot of that creativity. It starts to lose a lot of the momentum it had been gaining from the start. And then when you get to Hell or High Water, besides from the intro, I mean, it has a nice sort of breakdown and bridge to it, which I like. It's where, it's where I just started to get tired after listening to the album. I think, I think Venom is the last song on the album I was like, okay, yeah. I, I really like this so far. Um, and then we get into the final song, Pariah, which I don't know why this is a closing song. It does not sound like a closing song whatsoever. It sounds more like it should be placed somewhere between the heart of the heart and skin, somewhere like that, and maybe Hell or High Water should be the, uh, the ending song. Or maybe they should have taken one of their bonus tracks and put it in there. Playing God would have been a, a great song to end it off with. But Pariah as a song, it's very hard hitting. It had that riff that Matt uh, teased in one of the recording sessions that he did. And yeah, it's, I feel that this is quite a strong track. And again, this is one of the stronger tracks on the album. But overall, I feel like my favorite tracks are No Way Out, uh, You Wanna Battle, Here's a War, Broken, Venom, and Pariah. Those are my five highlight tracks of this album. Uh, I did get the deluxe album. Um, actually, I don't know if you can actually see it. Um, this is like, uh, I don't know if you can actually see it. This has got more of a, like a 3D layering if you can't see it on the actual camera. I suppose 3D is not an option anymore. But that's proof that I bought the album. Well, I kind of listened to the songs on YouTube first when they released them before the album actually came. I thought it was going to be one of those uh, things with pre-ordering and it just comes on Monday or something. I hate doing that. That happened when I bought Pokemon X. But speaking of playing God, I mean, I do say that it could have been a good closing song, but at the same time, I'm not very keen on the song either. I think it's light for kind of bad, mediocre reasons. Uh, it doesn't sound as strong as the album wants to uh, put itself out for. Again, Run For Your Life, nothing more different about the song. It's, it's a truly forgettable song. In Loving Memory, now, this is more like it. I like this. This, is, this comes in with a little chime to it in Drop D, the deluxe edition ends on Raising Hell. Let's let's listen to it again to see if it's my favorite. It's as fresh as you can make it. This is something Bullet have never done before, and this is something I wish Bullet would have done more of on this album. So overall, you know, I'm not very big on giving points, even though I do give them. Um, I'd probably give it like a 7.5 out of 10, because there are some strong songs on it, but there are a few weak songs as well. So that's what I think of the album, let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to look forward to more. Um, next week I will be posting my video where I rate the Lamb of God albums from worst to best in my honest opinion. I was going to mean that to be uploaded today, however uh, there's a few edits I need to make to it because there are some things I said which I don't necessarily agree with and I felt that because the Bullet album was released today that it would be a good time to upload this instead. So, until then, thank you for watching, leave a like uh, to show that you liked it, and until next time, lights out. You never really get a glimpse of the overall story until you actually play the game or they do a video demo, possibly at E3 or something. Look, Jeremy, I don't want to get copyright or anything, so I'm going to turn the TV off if that's okay with you. Thank you for understanding!